What's going on guys, I'm Zach, welcome to my shop. Today I wanna to take you through how I designed and built and hand routed this sort of minimalist looking ski trail map of Big Bear Mountain. Now Big Bear is a snowboarding mountain that is in Southern California where I live and my parents happen to have a place up there so this is actually a surprise gift for them. So I'm really excited to show you how I built it and give it to them as a gift for Christmas. Let's go ahead and get started. Before I dive into the build, I wanted to just briefly show you how I designed this. I found a high-res picture of the Big Bear map I wanted to trace and brought it into Illustrator and sized it up to the scale at which I wanted to build my project at. Then using the line and anchor point tools, I began picking and choosing the points I wanted to trace and using the direct selection tool to shape it to each outline. This scales up or down however you want and as you design you can add or subtract any details you want. Even a minimal amount of lines quickly creates a design that resonates. Eventually your design will start to resonate and for my piece I ended with this final design that was 28 inches in each direction. Okay, onto the build. I didn't fully have this worked out before beginning, but I knew I wanted to create something around 30 inches wide and tall using four quarter maple. The wood I had was rough on the side, so step one was to rip down straight edges on the table saw. A joiner is ideal for this, but using a table saw can give you a great reference line. Then using that as a reference space to square up the other side. I then arranged my pieces to make sure things lined up properly on the edges and that I was using the best faces. To keep things aligned during the glue up, I borrowed a friend's biscuit joiner. Without a drum sander or an extra wide planer, I really wanted to make this thing as flat as possible so cleanup would be easy and so that when I went to hand route things later, my surface would be flat. Biscuits don't add much in strength, but having used this for the first time, I can say that they go a very long way to keep things lined up in your glue ups. Using biscuits is as simple as marking and cutting the locations on each side based on the size of the biscuit you're using, applying a bunch of glue to the joints and the biscuits, and then repeating the process on the other side and attaching together. I added a few calls in the clamping process as well to help keep things flat and also wiped down as much excess glue as possible before it dried. This made things easier the next day when I used a belt sander and an orbital sander with 80 grit paper to flatten out the piece and remove any excess glue. I then used my track saw to trim one straight edge. You can just as easily use your circular saw with a straight edge to do this. I then set my fence to 28 inches and squared up the other side, giving me a very flat blank wooden canvas to design. My plan all along was to print my design at scale and then use spray glue to attach to the wooden surface. My design printed on 6 11 by 17 pieces of paper, which made it so that I could line up the center pieces properly and then work outwards to lay out the design. I used a drywall square to mark my center points on the piece as references and then used a series of folds on the paper to line up the middle pieces. This solution to getting things lined up was really simple and worked really well. I then attached the first piece using spray glue and was very careful to keep things lined up as this was my reference point for each other piece. Once that was in place, I sprayed glue on the rest of the wood and then added each piece of paper one by one until the design laid flush. To route the design, I'm using a V-carve bit usually reserved for CNC machines. This was perfect as I could be very precise about setting my depth on my plunge router and doing a set of test cuts at different depths until I achieve a line thickness and depth I was really happy with. I was pleasantly surprised to see how much control I had over the router in the process. Once I had done my test cuts, there wasn't much left to do but go for it. All in all, the routing of the main design took about 8 minutes as it only took a single pass. I then adjusted the depth slightly to more quickly route out the letters. This was a lot more time consuming but became easier the more I did it. After routing, I used my thinnest chisel to run over every line to remove any of the excess shavings left over from the router passes. I then finished off the routing by adjusting the depth once more and routing out all the little trail symbols that usually populate a ski map. The papers peeled off surprisingly easy once I was done, but the backup plan was to use some acetone and wipe down the papers, which in doing so immediately negated the effect of the glue and the papers peeled right off. I then could once again use my orbital sander to sand off away the remainder of the dried glue. The plan all along was to paint all the lines as well. 
color brought life to the design as well as helped differentiate everything on the map. And if I could go back, I think I'd line the entire piece with painter's tape, then route the design, and then before peeling off the tape, I'd use spray paint to cover all the lines, and then remove the tape to reveal really clean lines. This would work especially well if you were doing this using a CNC machine. Instead, I used some acrylic paint and a thin brush to paint on all my lines, and because the paint sat below the surface in that routed groove, I could use a wet paper towel every few minutes to wipe off the excess paint. Black paint for all the mountain lines, red for the ski lifts, and various colors for the trail symbols. Then one more round of acetone to get rid of as much paint as I could. It wasn't enough, so I had to go back one more time with 80 grit paper and do a once over to get rid of all the stained paint that couldn't be wiped off. I was really happy once I finished this, just to see how awesome the design was coming together. To add some fanciness to the piece, since it was already coming out way better than I expected, I also added a 45 degree bevel around the top edge with my router. I was back and forth on whether this needed a border. I still don't necessarily think it does, but wanted to add one for this particular build. I have a few pieces of Ipe hardwood flooring a friend gave to me that I chose to use for the border. The first step was to remove the grooves on the bottom as these were meant for hardwood flooring, followed by ripping off the tongue and groove edges and then ripping further into two inch strips, followed by cross cutting to rough length on the miter saw. I also added a 45 degree miter on one side before moving on to the next step. I thought the right way to do this was to create a routed groove where the larger map could sit on the border but recessed a centimeter or so down and appear like it was kind of floating within the border. So I moved over to the router table and did two passes using a wrapping bit to create the groove. And I also decided that the border needed to be a much thinner profile so I ripped off another inch or so from each piece at the table saw. Last up was to carefully mark and measure the final lengths of each miter joint and then cut down on the miter saw followed by doing a final test fit of everything. Measure three times, cut twice. Before assembly, I used some acetone to remove the excess sawdust. You can see here how much of that fine yellow dust was stuck to each of the pieces. Next, I clamped up everything up on some of my bench cookies and used a strap clamp to pull things together. I added glue to the miter joints and tightened things up, and then added glue into the rabbits I had created and dropped in the final piece. To hold the main map to the railing, I used pretty much every squeeze clamp I owned, and this not only provided the necessary strength to the miter joints, but it was helpful to reinforce the map to prevent any future bowing or flexing. The next day, I used some 220 grit paper to sand off any excess glue, break the edges of the border, and do a final pass on the map to smooth things out. I planned to use a French cleat system all along to hang this, so I headed back to the table saw and angled the blade at 45 degrees and passed a scrap 1x6 through the saw. By doing this, you create both sets of cleats that you'll need to hang the piece, one to go on the actual map and one to attach to the wall. I used glue and brad nails to hold things in place. Once the glue dries, this will be rock solid. For the bottom, I just cut a few more scraps of that same 1x6 to width and used a spacer to place them evenly on each side, and applied glue and brad nails to lock it in place. Now for finishing, I planned to use spray polyurethane and wanted to finish all sides of it so that the exposure to air would be even and thus prevent future warping. But I noticed when doing the back of the map first that for some reason the spray polyurethane was turning the maple a shade of pink. So off camera, I scratched the idea, sanded off the finish that I had applied to the front of the piece, and instead wiped on a thick coat of tongue oil which provided a layer of sheen to the piece, brought out the grain, and overall preserved the color of the wood. And the last thing to do was to hang it. So this was as simple as locating the studs in my walls, which were 16 inches on center, drilling pilot holes in the wall cleat, pre-drilling screws into the piece, and then drilling that cleat into the wall, making sure it was level in the process. Now this isn't the final place for my map, but I wanted to show you how it would look in its final form on the wall. I think it's beautiful.
So I think that's gonna wrap it up for this video. I had a really good time building this. This was something that I had wanted to do for a long time and I kinda had a vision for it in my head and I figured with it being Christmas, this was the perfect project to do uh, and surprise my folks with it. Uh, I think it'd be really fun to experiment in the future by trying it on a CNC machine or maybe doing something smaller just to see what other cool things that would translate really well to this sort of minimalist looking design. If you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting the like button as well as subscribing to the channel. I try to put out projects every couple of weeks and it would be awesome if you guys stuck around for it. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys next time.